Welcome to a special program called Defense Against Diabetes. This is a special initiative that Lions Club International is doing over the next two years. And Lions Club International is asking each of the local Lions Clubs to put on a forum and spread the news about what the diabetes is and how you can defend against it. And so today we're going to talk with a person who's on the front line of dealing with diabetes. And in the second segment of our program, we will talk with a family whose mother had diabetes and then ended up having kidney failure and what that meant to the family and how the family, all the kids worked together to assist their mother to live a fuller life than uh, might be expected. So let's get started with our opening session. My guest today is Laura Sitka, who is a nurse practitioner, and she's at St. Joe's Internal Medicine and Pediatrics. They're on M24, uh, right next to where Dunham's and the Dollar Store is. So, Laura, tell us, what is a nurse practitioner? A nurse practitioner is a registered nurse with a, uh, a bachelor's degree who then goes on to uh, a, a program that usually is, you know, mm. now a three to four year, um, you know, degree post bachelor's um, and then extra additional training uh, to become a nurse practitioner. So um, the entry level degree now is, um, is changing. It used mm. to be a master's degree. Um, and now it is changing to be uh, a doctorate. Yeah. So most programs now um, will, will graduate nurse practitioners with a doctorate degree. And how does that relate to then what a doctor would do and what you can do? So, you know, in, a, in broad terms, a nurse practitioner can do about 80 to 90% of what physicians do. Um, but in the setting that I'm in, um, I, as you mentioned, I'm on yeah. the front lines. Uh, in the setting that I'm in, in primary care, our, our job yeah. um, descriptions are identical. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you being here. And Thank I you. asked you because when I came to see you, you expressed a concern about, you know, are you pre-diabetic? Let's test for some things. And... Let's start out by talking, there are two types of diabetes, diabetes one and diabetes two. Can you give me a brief synopsis of the difference between them? Sure, sure. Um, so uh, there's actually, you know, it's much uh, lesser known, but there's actually yeah. other types of diabetes yeah. as well. Um, so, but we'll focus just mainly yeah. on um, diabetes type one and type two. Um, so diabetes in, in general terms is, uh, where the pancreas, which is the organ in your body that produces your body's own natural yeah. insulin, where the pancreas um, is inefficient and begins to fail. Uh, in diabetes type one, um, that, that failure tends to happen over a very short period of time, days to weeks, um, even yeah. you know, months, but, but generally over a very short period of time. Diabetes type two, uh, we won't get into the other types. Okay. Uh, diabetes type two tends to happen much more slowly, much more gradually. Uh, usually it takes, it's a period of months to most of the time, many, many years. Yeah. And, and the, the, the decline of the pancreas is, is very gradual. And there's a lot of factors that contribute to, um, to that mm -hmm. decline. Okay. Um. I know recently the Lions Club participated in the Orient Area Chamber's Healthy Body, Healthy Mind Expo mm -hmm. and shared information. And one of the pieces of information that we had was, are you at risk for type 2 diabetes? And we had this flyer there and people could take this little test and a lot of them did and I was surprised. Uh, one of the biggest risk factors is age. Mm -hmm. The older you are, the more at risk you are for it. And then they ask a number of questions. And uh, so I just think it's great that you asked me about the 
pre-diabetes. And so I began to do a little studying and realized, you know, diet has a lot to do with it. Yes, it does. And you gave me a great piece of information called building a balanced diet. And to me, how simple. You take a plate, you divide it in half, and on half of it, you have your green vegetables, your salads, your spinaches, broccoli, asparagus, and all the green stuff. You take the other half and divide that in half, and so 25% of the plate is your meat, and it's best that you have lean meat, so you have your protein, but your chicken and food like that, and you stay away from those big juicy steaks as much as possible. <laughs> Once a month may be okay. And then in the other thing, you might have some rice or potato or some other thing. Would you like to amplify further on this? Yeah, so, so diabetes, diabetes really um, is, you know, as you mentioned, there's, yep. um, there's diet plays a, a very large role in, um, in who is at risk for diabetes. And, you know, diabetes, there's a lot of different um, factors that yep. contribute to, you know, who gets diabetes and who doesn't. We're, we're mainly talking about type 2 diabetes yes. now. Um, and genetics is one. We know that there's a genetic link um, to diabetes. It tends to run in families. Um, but uh, and, and honestly, um, you know, the, the gene for diabetes is present in many, mm -hmm. many people. Um, but, but who gets diabetes and, and who doesn't? So that's a, the topic that, um, you know, is quite, yep. um, quite uh, there's quite a lot of interest in that in, in the yep. research. And, and we know that even if you have the gene for diabetes, as well as many other diseases, that you don't necessarily get it, that lifestyle yeah. um, plays a large role in, uh, in what your risk is for diabetes. And, and part of lifestyle is diet. Diet is really the foundation of yeah. all health. Um, even if you exercise like humans should, getting 150 minutes a week um, in yeah. of exercise, even if you do that, even if you sleep the way humans should, get eight hours of sleep per night, um, and you manage your stress and, and you yeah. keep your weight in a healthy range, if your diet isn't healthy, you're still at risk yeah. for diabetes. So we, we know that there's a lot of factors in, but really yeah. diet is the foundation. So with that being said, uh, what is important with diet and, and how is that re, you know, related yeah. to um, not only your risk for diabetes, but also if you are diagnosed with prediabetes or, or diabetes, yeah managing your diet and, and really making some changes can alter your future course, um, can, can really arrest the development of diabetes and, and have your, yeah. your numbers um, make a U-turn back into the normal range. So um, the most important yeah. of that you've mentioned uh, is, is vegetables. Vegetables are the most nutrient-dense foods on the planet, you know, nothing really comes close. Yep. So that's why, you know, this is sort of a nice little visual. That's why we recommend at least half of your plate, um, and your plate should really be no bigger f than your thumb to your pinky finger. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but half of your plate should really be filled with vegetables. You know, greens, the more colors, yeah. the better. Um, really, nature is, um, is great yeah. in that you know it really uh, appeals to our eye. The more colorful it is, the more we are ten tend to be drawn to it. And there's a reason for that. That's because yeah. that's the yeah. that's where all the nu nutrition the, the nutrients are. So really, that's what you should focus on. Um, yeah. I like to tell yeah. patients that you know vegetables. Um, if you hold out your hand and curl your fingers down, that's really one serving. Yeah. Your hand is pretty proportional, to, you know, to you. So one serving yeah. is your handful. You really should get five in per day. If you can do that, you're, you're well on your way yeah. to improving things, you know, but it, you know, one can't live on just vegetables alone. Yeah. Uh, so put in you know, fruits, yeah. a serving of fruit, um, you know, a couple of times a day, a serving of fruits a little bit smaller, what yeah. fits in the palm of your hand. Um, and then really decrease any animal. Um, you mentioned like the leaner, the better, which is very true of the spectrum of animal, um, yeah. you know, the, the fattier, 
kind of uh, types of, of animal are on one side of the spectrum and then leaner cuts yeah. fish are on the other. But anything on the animal spectrum, I like to yeah. say anything that has a face or a mother, you really should limit to just the, yeah. the, the size of the heel of your palm and the yeah. thickness um, for the whole day. Yeah. The research is very clear. The more animal you eat, the more you know disease you get. Yeah. The more it, it worsens diabetes. So really, you know, cut that down to just what fits here and the thickness. Yeah. You know, nut seeds, avocados for the good fats, yeah. and you know, legumes are the unsung yeah. heroes of really your diet. So, um, beans, kidney beans, lentils, edamame, yeah. get those things in. That's about the size of your fist. Um, so a couple yeah. servings of that per day. This kind of makes it nice and easy, yep. but this really, um, you know, emphasizes the the vegetables. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yep. you know, whole grains are also yep. part of the picture. Diet, if you, the closer you can eat to that, the, the yep. better off you'll be. Okay, the American Diabetes Association puts out all kinds of wonderful information. And one of the nice things they have is, what can I eat? And they talk about non-starchy vegetables. Yes. Other words, we got asparagus and green beans, carrots, there's some color, and they got cabbage, they got eggplant and cauliflower and broccoli and tomatoes and spinach and onion and peppers, and then your fruits, they got apples and blueberries and orange and grapefruit and grapes and peaches, and I'm getting hungry. And then they talk about grains and they talk about whole grains, um, whole wheat flour, um, their whole oat or oatmeal, um, and brown rice. And staying away from the processed white grains, the white bread. Uh, I haven't come across potatoes yet here, so that sounds like something you should stay away from. And if you've got to have a starchy vegetable, then they recommend acorn squash and butternut squash and green peas and corn. Oh, still haven't come across regular potatoes. And for protein, <laughs> there's there's you know some there is a misconception yeah. that um, you know p potatoes are are bad for you yeah. and that's something that you should stay away from. You know, in general, yeah. um, potatoes are healthy. There's potassium, yeah. there's fiber if yeah. you eat, especially if you eat the skin. As Americans, it, we tend to overdo our yeah. our consumption of those things, and you know, it, it's all in how it's prepared. Yeah. So, you know, we tend to take potatoes and fry them and put salt on them and yeah. you know, butter and you know, potatoes. There is a place in a healthy diet. Potatoes are plants. Plants are yeah. far healthier for you than than anything else, but. Mm -hmm you know, watch your portion sizes and how you cook it, what you put on yep. it. Okay, another thing that is available is plant protein versus animal protein, which is what you were just talking yep. about here. And they talk about red lentils. Yes. They talk about um, black beans. They talk about almonds and uh, Various things like that. So there are a number of things you can get protein from. Oh, for sure, yes. That doesn't come from, as you say, something that has a face on a mother. That's right, that's so. right. Plant protein is far yeah. healthier for you yeah. than, um, than animal protein. And, uh, you know, the typical American eats um, two to three times more protein than we need. Yep. You know, protein is, uh, um, you know, the, the fad diets kind of come and go. Right now it's very popular um, to, to be yeah. eating a high protein, low carb diet. But, um, you know, the research and the science really says that, um, you know, humans do best, meaning, you know, we have the least amount of disease, um, mm -hmm. especially with diabetes, you know, knowing that, I, I know you've mentioned in other yeah. segments, the, the complications of diabetes, including kidney disease, that protein plays a big role. Um, yeah in you know in complications of diabetes as well as many other conditions but the source of your protein is um, is very yeah. important so plant protein is far yeah. healthier um, than animal protein and and we need far far less yeah. protein um, yeah. you know to, to thrive than most people are eating the typical American yeah. eats two to three times more protein than we need okay. so in addition to diet you just can't sit around and feed your face. Right. You got to get out and be active in addition. Yes. And so here's one that comes from the American Diabetes. Getting started with physical activity for people with diabetes 
or people who don't want diabetes. Let's get active and yeah. do things. Um, and what kind of activities? Walking. Mm -hmm. Doesn't cost it. I mean, maybe the pair, a ton of shoes or running shoes or yes. something like that using the stairs instead of the elevator, mm -hmm. assuming that you're not going up 17 flights of stairs, of thing. Um, moving around throughout the day. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're at work, take a break. Walk down the hallway. No, don't go get the Pepsi or the Coke. Um, exactly. Maybe get uh, a pack of almonds or something <laughs> exactly. like that. Exactly. Um, you can do aerobic exercises. Um, you can do some strength training, uh, probably some yoga, but be active. Don't just sit and vegetate. That's true. Um, as, that, as little as 150 minutes a week um, protects you, yeah. even if you, um, you know, are at risk for diabetes yeah. and, and yeah. haven't yet been diagnosed with prediabetes or, or diabetes. 150 minutes a week of doing anything that gets your heart rate up yeah. enough that you couldn't carry a tune while yeah. you were doing it. That's that's sort of the benchmark, we call it the talk test. If you can do that, um, that's considered exercise. If you couldn't comfortably carry a tune while you're doing it. So 150 minutes a week of doing anything that fits that criteria protects you. Um, okay, protects so you from getting disease. Spread over seven days, that's a little over 20 minutes a day. Right. Um, Which, you know, with our busy lives, yes. um, you know, really, you know, I've heard people say it quite a bit, well, I don't have time to exercise. Okay, you know, if you don't have time to, go, to drive to a gym or, um, you know, yeah. work out to an, an exercise video yeah. at, at home, you know, almost everybody um, can fit 20 to 30 minutes in, you know, in, in a day. And it doesn't have to be a continuous 20 to 30 yeah. minutes. You could break it up into chunks. So, um, but know that it's very achievable um, and you could, you, as you said, you yeah. could take the stairs, um, any amount of activity during the yeah. day, it, it all adds up. So, um, you know, we, we like to say, um, you know, the buzzword now in the research is that sitting is the new smoking. Yeah. So we all know how, um, what detrimental effects smoking has on our health, um, but sitting is um, the, the the research really tells us that sitting for extended periods, um, which many Americans, you know, we drive an hour to work, we sit at our computers all day, um, we come home and we're exhausted, we sit at our on our couches. You know, sitting is the new smoking. So even yeah. if you are, um, you know, if you could yeah. put five to 10, 15 minutes in, in a day and, and break it up, it's very beneficial for your health. Okay, got a suggestion. Yes. There are dogs that need rescuing. Yes. Get a rescue dog Absolutely. and take it for a 10 minute walk in the morning and a 10 minute walk in the afternoon or <laughs> early evening and there's your exercise. Yes. You've done two good things. Right. You, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so and there's plenty of other things you can do. Get active yes. with your kids, um, especially if you've got younger ones. Um, yes, absolutely. Play some games in the yard, even if you're doing nothing more than maybe playing a, a cornhole game or something. Anything, like, yeah. moving your body, anything, it will benefit yeah. you. You know, um, we, you know, people who have yeah. kids uh, of the school age, um, you know, we tend to be driving them to practice or, you yeah. know, while your kids are, you know, doing their sports practice, join in, you yeah. know, on the sidelines, um, you know, there's, there's lots of different ways you could sneak in activity. Yeah. In the winter months, I have a lot of patients who say, you know, it's it's miserable outside, I, I don't wanna walk outside. I, you know, I get it, I don't wanna fall either. Yeah. But um, now with technology, if you have internet at home, there's lots of free videos you can stream. Yeah. You can get a perfectly good workout at home without going anywhere. Yeah. Um, but if you wanna get out, I encourage you to, you know, be part of society, go to the mall and walk. A yeah. um, lot of, um, you know, communities, like Orient included, have a pool at the high yeah. school um, that is available to the community during certain hours. So there's there's yeah. always ways you could squeeze in activity. So um, I encourage everyone to um, kind of think outside yeah. the box, you know, and to get your activity in. It's so, so important. 
Well, appreciate you taking time today. We've been talking with Laura Sitka, who is a nurse practitioner in practice here in the Orion area, who is one who lives what she teaches. I do. That uh, diet is important, exercise is important, and appreciate you taking time to share with us today and be part of Lions Club International and the Lake Orion Lions Club Defense Against Diabetes. Get decked out in red, white, and blue and join us for the third annual Orion Veterans Memorial Day 5K Run and Walk scheduled to take place on Monday, May 27th. Check-in will take place at 20 Front Street beginning at 8 a.m. with the race starting promptly at 9 a.m. on Anderson Street next to Children's Park. All participants will receive a dog tag at the finish line. Following the race, participants are encouraged to stick around for the Memorial Day Parade in downtown Lake Orion at 11 a.m., followed by the Memorial Day Ceremony at the Orion Veterans Memorial at 1 p.m. To register or for more information, call 248-391-0304, extension 1003, or visit oriontownship.org. For this segment of the Defense Against Diabetes program that we're presenting today, we have the Flood family. They are a family with long roots here in the Orient area. And all of these kids here, <laughs> their mother had diabetes, and so they're going to share some of what the impact of diabetes in their family was. Mike. I'm going to ask you to introduce your brother and sisters. Uh, thank you, Joanne. First of all, I'll go by our age group. <laughs> I, I'm really the youngest, but no, I'm the oldest. <laughs> it's my sister Cheryl, my brother Harold, my sister Dawn, and my baby sister Kim. Welcome. Appreciate you all coming. Now, your mother, Virginia Flood Gingell, most people knew her as Verley, yeah. and I know that she had later in life diabetes. What was it like when that, you know, how did she happen to come down with diabetes? I'm assuming it was type <laughs> two. And what impact did it have on the family and on each of you? Well, to begin with, we've lived with diabetes all of our lives because our great grandmother Van Camp had diabetes and it was nothing as a child to see her shooting insulin into her stomach. And then uh, her son, our grandfather, had diabetes, and then my mother had it. So we've been living with it for a long time. And uh, with mom, she um, got it in about 1972. My dad had died the previous year, mm. and um, she got the adult yep. onset, is how I thought it was. So we are pretty much aware of everything that um, Diabetes, would you had the diet and watch the exercise and, and everything. In the first couple of years, maybe in the first decade, I don't think it really affected us until she um, had a kidney removed and then her other kidney failed. Mm. And that's when we all had to come together and take care of her. And what did that involve? Did each of you take turns or <laughs> how did it work? Well, we, we all had our individual we things that we did. Right. Right. Okay, Harold? We had a, we had a schedule uh, that Kim put together. Mm -hmm. uh, Kim was really <clears throat> primary in making sure everything was happening. She did not go for dialysis uh, at a dialysis facility. And she uh, actually had dialysis in her home overnight, which mm -hmm. is kind of rare, as I understand it, at least at that time, too. And, but mom had had a problem with an arm where uh, she couldn't really lift the, the bags that were used for that. So Kim put together our schedule and all the, the meds and all that type of thing, and we all took turns. Somebody was there every night to set her up and make sure she had what she needed. And so it was, it was, it was a time when we all really had to cooperate with each other and, <laughs> and help each other out. I mean, you'd call somebody and say, well, I'm gonna make it tonight, so mm -hmm. can you take over and things? Yeah. And what was involved besides hooking up the machine? I mean, <laughs> did you have to stay awake the whole night? Or? Oh, no. no. We, no. We, could, we could set it up no. in the, earlier in the day. A big part of it is um, with her diabetes, she also had eyesight problems. 
And so to make the connection between her catheter and the equipment mm. was a little tricky for her and, and like you said, to lift up those heavy yeah. bags and such. And she just slept through it and everything. Once it was all hooked up, we were set. But she also, with her medications she needed to have, she couldn't see to, and had some mobility issues with trying to get those pills open. And mm -hmm. so we had to set that medication up and different things. But somebody was in and out of the house and you guys helped with cleaning and help her, because her eyesight was so bad, she couldn't see to write checks and such towards the end. You know, so it got difficult. And we used to have to fill her insulin needles and leave yep. them in the refrigerator mm -hmm. for her because she couldn't uh, see to, to do that. So that was even a big problem for her. Yeah, one of the, one of the issues that, that we had to learn was how to, to draw her blood and use yep. the, the, the machine to, to pick the fingers and and read the, the, the amount of in, on the machine, of yep. how to do all that, which was not not pleasant for her, but and unpleasant for us at times too. <laughs> And none of you are professional healthcare <laughs> yeah. providers. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no but we're good that now. We did, <laughs> we did go to class to learn yes, about the dialysis and how yeah. to take care of her. And the biggest issue that we had to be concerned with really was infection in her port. You know, yeah. Her, yeah. That's, that was number one, is to make sure she didn't get an infection. Oh. And part of the problem, what happened when she had the injury to her arm, is a diabetic in renal failure does oh. not heal. Mm -hmm. So basically, her broken shoulder and arm stayed that way. They even tried pinning it and such, but she had no use of the upper arm. And when did that happen? Because I can remember your mother, I mean, when I first met her, was when I went to vote, and she was in charge of the voting <laughs> yeah. at my yeah. precinct. Yeah. And I mean, and she was always a, an outgoing, vivacious mm -hmm. person. I mean, big smile, you know, just loved everybody. Yeah. Um, very Probably involved about in 19, the community. 1989, I would think yeah. that that happened yeah. because Probably, yeah. my granddaughter was born and she wasn't able yeah. to yeah. lift her up on her lap, and she, we had to put her up there. She had a, a trip and fall. Yeah. In a local establishment she here. Her shoulder. Yeah. You know, you, you walk into a, a okay. facility and they'll have a, a, a carpet there. Yeah. Well, it rolled up and she oh, got oh. her foot cut underneath it and, and fell. When yeah. when she fell, she actually caught her arm in the shopping cart yeah. and fell on her face. Oh, so she her was, arm broke. Yeah. Yeah. When you're right diabetic, off. it doesn't heal like yeah. it, it would right. a normal right. person. That's that's one of the issues you have with, with diabetics is right. that they don't heal well when they have injuries, and right. uh, you really have to be real careful about anything that happens to you. The five of us have been very fortunate that uh, we haven't had to, to deal with the diabetic ourselves. We have all all our other stuff we had to deal with, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah. it's hereditary and it, it has missed us five for some reason. So, yeah. well, except for yeah. okay, so she had type one diabetes. No, it was no. Type, type two. two. Okay, type two. It's from insulin the dependent. Limited reading I've done is really a lifestyle mm. type. Um, even though you had diabetes in your family with your great grandmother, your grandfather, um, but. Type two can sometimes be treated with a proper diet. I mean, mm -hmm. you eat more vegetables and salads and that right. type of thing. You cut down on fats and so on. You cut down on sugary drinks and sure. uh, starches. And, and our grandfather did that. Our grandfather yeah. basically took care of his diabetes with mostly with his uh, his diet and his no. exact he activities and things like that. So your, your grandfather was very active. He yes. farmed, I know, yep. Yep. and uh, yep. for and a he, long time was a volunteer fire to member, firefighter. Yep. And, and he was uh, uh, one of the first Stilton County Sheriff's deputies uh, yep. out here. Yep. Yep. Well, I have to disagree with that a little bit, only because um, her baby brother, my mom's baby brother, Dwayne, was not like her at all. Mm -hmm. He was very skinny all of his life. He ate a good diet. He was very active, very active. And he got the adult onset. Huh? And they also had the kidney. He had a kidney removed too. Wow. And my Aunt yes. Arlene too. Yes. Yeah. Her sister. So we, in our family, we really do look at that heredity. Yep. heredity. Now I have kidney disease. And when my um, sugar goes up, my doctor's right on it. And Know, cut out the starches more than anything, walk a little bit more, get some uh -huh. exercise. But I really truly believe because it hit three out of five kids that yeah. 
So this one might be a shock for Michael, but I've actually been diagnosed with pre-diabetic and on medication, so it's all yeah. under control, and I've never had an issue with having sky-high um, sugars at all. Nothing. But I do do the, the finger yep. testing every morning, and I take medication for it daily. But <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> Mike, you told me that one of your sisters wrote some sort of a paper or thing dealing with a treatment for her that could you explain it or have that sister? Oh, that, well, that was me. Cheryl, and I think okay. Mother wanted you to do that. Yes. Um, well, in my in my career, I did some writing and, and things, and so um, where she was getting uh, where the dialysis was, mm -hmm. and where she would go in. Kim knows more about the center. Somebody there wanted to come and interview her because she had been on this kind of dialysis at home for five years, which was a yeah. real record there, mm -hmm. and they wanted her story. To yeah. in, uh, it went into this pamphlet that was distributed to all mm -hmm. the, the people. And one of the first things she said, because she had diabetes yeah. and she had already lost a kidney and that kidney was failing, and one of the things she said was she thought she was just going to die, that it was a death sentence. Mm. You know, she was just going to go home. And uh, But a relative convinced her that she could get some more good years out of her life and we kids would you know, help with everything, and we did. Um, one of the things that she had a problem with is what's on the diet, what's good for the kidneys is not good for the diabetic. Yeah. The diabetic wants to eat a lot of protein, and that's hard on your kidneys, especially when you have only one, and mm -hmm. we had to make a delicate balance. And I sat with her for almost two hours with a dietitian, going through this list of what she had to eat every day and at the end, mm -hmm. she was so sick of just eating bananas and everything yes. yep. and just, you know, having to be on that rigorous diet. It, it was almost too much food for her, I think. Well, she, loved her, she loved her chocolate and sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she did. <laughs> every night I had to make one so in the refrigerator. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What was, what was interesting is as a diabetic and then when she went into renal failure mm -hmm. and they do an education process and usually yeah. the patient will come in with mm -hmm. a family member so yeah. that they can learn and we all went oh. in <laughs> and the <laughs> dialysis <laughs> center was a little overwhelmed with yes. where we would all sit because we all wanted to know and be educated I about guess. it so we could help her. But they were very happy that all of us showed yes. up too. Yes. So, and the fact that she did not have any infection her doing this, she had to, she had to be in a ster uh, sterile environment, which was her one room mm -hmm. where everything was yep. taken care of, and all of us handling things, and they were just amazed. Yeah. Yeah. So after the renal failure and the second kidney, she was pretty much confined to the house, so mm -hmm. she... Oh, well, not, not really. at first. <laughs> <laughs> at first. At the, no. at the, uh, towards the end, yes. <laughs> towards the end, but no, she yeah. pretty much did yeah, anything. She, the one thing she, with the peritoneal dialysis that yeah. she had, um, originally she would do it four times a day and it would take between a half an hour yep. and 45 minutes to do that. Okay. Afterwards, when she went on the night dialysis, yes. She was free during the day to be able to come and go yeah. any that she, she needed until her mobility and such yeah. became a problem. Yeah, we get her down to Myers or oh, her she couldn't shopping. drive yeah. because of her arm. Yeah, yeah. one of but the problems with yeah. diabetics is the problem with their feet and because yes. of circulation problems. Mm -hmm. And so she was always very particular about making sure that her feet were maintained so that she wouldn't have any injury to yeah. them because that would have a hard time healing. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we were grateful she never had that problem. And your eyes. Well, I think yeah. one of the things that is striking me in listening to you share the story about your mother, the thing that comes through to me is love. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the love that you had for your, the, the love that your mother had for all of you and for others in the community, I mean, I don't think I ever recall seeing your mother upset. I'm sure there was time to <laughs> <laughs> she was. Yes. Oh, well, let's at, at us. <laughs> yeah. But, um, no, only at us. She had a very I good mean, attitude. I just saw her being very outgoing. Um, when things didn't work quite right at the polling place, she didn't let it upset no. her. Uh, when the polls closed and you had all of these candidates wanting to you know, get the results, this was of the old voting machines. Yep. Right. 
where you had to open up the back of the machine and read the thing, and the numbers are, you know, itty bitty. And she was always accommodating. She would, you know, and the rules were you read the numbers, you double checked the numbers, you had a different person go and read them, and then you. The people who were sitting at the tables writing the numbers would then get up and they would come and the people who were reading the numbers would go check the numbers and well, she made sure you read the numbers once. All the political folks got their information, they cleared out, and then the election workers could get down to business. But your mother never would say, now you people stay away, you get, you get over there, you know, you, <laughs> we got work to do. She was never no. like that. She yeah. was always very, very accommodating and uh, I just thought the world of her. I just I she really, was always really in enjoyed control, your mother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mother, was, our family was raised here uh, in Gingerville, yeah. basically, and, and she was, uh, uh, we were heavily involved with the community center when the Gingerville Community yeah. Center used to be over on, uh, on maybe in Baldwin. And then she was, uh, dad was fire chief uh, when he passed yeah. away, and so she was involved with that. PTA. And she was a community activist, too, yes, a little yeah. bit. Yes, she mm -hmm. was. She Remember uh, the Orient plant? She yep. was behind yep. um, the Orient plant for, uh, she stood up at a township meeting and yep. said, let's, let's take this to the voters. And, and um, I mm -hmm. remember her canvassing for that. Yep. She did a survey. And she worked for this uh, census. She was a really outgoing person. She Very had involved. a lot of friends. And that yep. was a sad thing for us at the end was she played the piano. She couldn't play the piano anymore. Uh, mm -hmm. she, couldn't, she couldn't do anything. Yep. She couldn't knit. She couldn't read. Although um, o Oakland County has a wonderful library yep. where we would go in and get auto books yeah, for her. Yep. Yeah. And I, I worked at the county. So I would yeah. go in there and and uh, suggest some books and she told me her yep. favorite authors and so there are really um, good, good resources. Uh, resources here in the county for yeah. anyone that is suffering from yeah. diabetes or you know and which, we, because your eyesight does go in your fingers what's that called yeah. neuropathy neuropathy yeah, yeah. The so fun she thing, yeah. the library for the blind yeah. actually mails those to your home yes. now they probably mm -hmm. send them electronically or something no. but right but that was very accommodating yeah. because the eyesight was a big problem for her. Yes. yes. And another thing, she didn't take, um, uh, she didn't do this, but what they told us in class too is there were actually cruises that people that are on dialysis, they go on a cruise. And these cruises are yep. for people who have to get their dialysis every other day or do like mother yep. did. So that was really good. Didn't you have someone that worked at, uh, continued working when they were on dialysis? Yes. Yeah. Yep. So it's yeah. not a, a death sentence per se, but you just have to change your lifestyle. And well, I want to take, thank all of you for taking some time to come visit us, tell us what it is like dealing with somebody with diabetes who then goes into kidney failure yeah. and the extra steps that are needed, the extra care, the extra sterile environment and things like that that are involved. and really the lesson really is rather than face that kind of thing watch your diet when you're er, when you're young um, get your leafy green vegetables <laughs> and things like that uh, you know they're doing a lot of preaching about staying away from sugary drinks even things like fruit juice oh, these wow. days mm -hmm. um, you know, drink more water, get exercise. So, and I know your mother was active in that regard. Yeah, so, I think the one thing that I, yeah. I like to say is don't be afraid of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, people get some knowledge. Um, be, and, and you really do need support, you know, and yeah. don't be afraid of asking for support. Mom, yeah. you know, mom was self-sufficient, yeah. but, but she needed to help. Yeah. And when she needed to help, we were there. And, and uh, you really need to rely on other people and not be really afraid, and not be afraid to help. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. people say, well, you know, but, but you can't yeah. catch it. <laughs> it's not a, it's <laughs> no. not a contagious yeah. disease. Yeah. No. And, uh, but you can certainly yeah. be a lot of help to somebody. And it is doable. Yep. You yes, can still is. enjoy your life. It's Thank you, doable so much. because of the love in the Flood in family. Well. Yeah. And your concern about your mother and, you know, 
her whole life. She kind of took care of us, too. Yeah. <laughs> you, we're, you, we're you can edit this out, but there's a funny thing about Grandpa, because he, he was a diabetic for, for, since yeah. I was like 10 years old. And so when Mom would make dinner, Grandpa had his special chocolate pudding. Well, Mom would make these pies and cakes and everything, but every one of us wanted that chocolate pudding, yes, we didn't did. we? We did. <laughs> yeah. And he'd have these sugarless cookies, and, and our little cousin would always have to have a sugarless cookie. And back then, you didn't yeah. have as much as you right, have now. Right, now right. your diet, you can find all this food in the supermarket, and not much yeah. more than what a regular yeah. one costs. I want to thank you all very much for being with us today and sharing it's very much appreciated, and as the Lake Orion Lions Club does more to be part of the initiative that the Lions Club International has on defense against diabetes, sharing your information will be a part of that effort. So again, thank each and every one of you for taking time to come in today and share. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you, Joanne. For those of you who would like more information, uh, we're going to try to put information on the Lake Orion Lions website, which is lakeorionlions.org. And if you would like to write for some of the information that we showed you today, you can write The Fence Against Diabetes, Lake Orion Lions, P.O. Box 255, Lake Orion, Michigan, 48361 and we'll be happy to send you out the information. So uh, here's to some happy living and uh, continuing our fight and our defense against diabetes. Uh, and thank you for being with us and enjoying this informational program today.